Estos días nos van a encontrar aquí a química orgánica y a colegas. My name is Akradi. I'm doing a fifth PhD under the supervision of Professor Martin. My topic is asymmetric organic catalysis. <coughs> I'm Sajad Ali from Pakistan. I'm a uh, working professor uh, Professor Clever Lab and, uh, by, uh, and uh, my topic of is the is uh, chlorophyll fertilization. Uh, my name is Almas. I'm here for the last five years in Brazil and uh, I've been a PhD here from Unicam and now it's my second month here in Muscar uh, doing uh, my postdoctorate with Professor Pedro Fagini and uh, Professor Antonio Mosel. Uh, my name is Shehzad and I'm also doing uh, PhD in this guys. And I also from Pakistan. I'm doing this uh, coverage here at Inkapa. And uh, my topic is the end and doping of the AU2. And today we get new students. Okay, it's all you mentioned the topic, I will also mention. I am working on the Sub-Literal product. Sub-Literal product, it's great by transformation and variety of things. Okay, uh, let's discuss Pakistan. Pakistan, the lens of fuels. Pakistan is the combination of two words, Pak, fuels, Pakistan, the place. So this is the translation, the lens of fuels. Some people told me, Pakistan, you all are, are fuels. I don't know, this is the translation of Pakistan. <laughs> okay. When the word Pakistan comes, the people think it's slow. <laughs> when I go to some places, the people think, you have bum? Oh, no! <laughs> 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 uh, maybe you don't have bum, but you are the lady of Abusama. You are the son of Abusama. Oh, no, I am not the son of Abusama. Oh, there is very ugly places, ugly mountains. So you are living here in the ugly places. Oh no, man, I'm living in a place. But these are the media which show to the people in the world that Pakistan is such a place. Let's discover it. Whether Pakistan is this or it is a different place. Okay, Pakistan is situated in a place in South Asia in a really important ge geographic points of view. It is Pakistan. And around Pakistan there is very important countries. Just like India, China, Afghanistan, Iran. But instead of all, Pakistan is a very geographic point of view because nowadays China is the international supplier for all things to the world. But China can't export their things directly to the world because they have no coastal line. Pakistan is coastal line again. Uh, here. <laughs> <laughs> so, the food and the things which supply the world, they come to Pakistan and then from water path they can reach to other places of the world and I think here in Brazil they have also China markets here. So, that's why Pakistan is a uh, very important role in the uh, development of these countries. Okay, this is the flag of, uh, the flag of Pakistan which is uh, red, uh, sorry, which is white and uh, green. Why uh, the green show the minority, mean there is Muslims, and the white show other uh, other religious uh, people, just like in Buddhism, Christianism, uh, Buddhism, Sikhism. And these are a symbol of unity. So in Pakistan, we have three things, faith, discipline, and uh, faith, discipline, and unity. So these are the main features on which all the Pakistani states. So we must be united, we must have discipline and we must have faith in God. These are two guys who got independence of Pakistan in India. This is Qaid Yazam and this is Gandhi. Qaid Yazam is the founder of Pakistan and Gandhi is the founder of India. But these two guys, they work together to guard independence for these two countries. Okay, let's discuss a little bit about the founder of Pakistan, it is Pagyatu. He was a great educator, great barrister at that time. And his complete name was Muhammad Ali Jinnah. But later on, in 1972, Pakistan split due to some reason into two parts. West parts and East parts. Nowadays, the West parts 
the rest part of Pakistan is not in the present Pakistan. But the east part of Pakistan can become another country, Bangladesh. Now it is a separate country, Bangladesh. Nowadays, the present Prime Minister of Pakistan is uh, Nawaz Shri. This guy is the present Prime Minister. And this guy, Mumnu Hussain, he is the present in, uh, President of Pakistan. Okay, let's dis uh, discuss a little bit about the history. Some people are thinking that Pakistan gave independence in 1947, so it is a young country. But if we see the history, Pakistan is the whole uh, Pakistani people and the culture are very old. From 5,000 years back, there was some people which is called industrial civilization. So this civilization was there. And some new recent fossils uh, show the evidence of these people which were living in that part of the, uh, the world. And then some other people, which is called into Aryan people, which came from Greeks and uh, some uh, Russian, and they become the part of these people. So the part of the civilization of their people is also present in Pakistan. And then from 16th to 17th century, there was Mughals, Mughals Empire, just like now, nowadays we have Taj Mahal, so it, Taj Mahal was being founded by Mughals. So in Pakistan there is a lot of places too, which is made by uh, Mughals. And then uh, in the 18th century there was a British people who was ruling here. And then in 1947 Pakistan and India got independence from British people. So British people they colonized uh, Pakistan and India. These are uh, some uh, historical events, uh, just like this paper Kandahar, this place Kandahar. This is the part of Pakistan and in this place is the people were viewed from 5th to 2nd century. So it is two old places and the civilization is still present here. The people of that part is also showing the characteristic shown by Kandahara peoples which were living. So these people were Buddhist, they were following Buddhism. So, Buddha was the great uh, uh, person who uh, the other uh, Buddhism, they were following Buddha. So, the Buddhism is also present nowadays in that part of the uh, Pakistan. These are also the places which is being made by these uh, peoples which were living in that part. Now, let's discuss a little bit about the religious environment. Pakistan is a country which is being made on uh, one uh, way that most of the people there is Islam, uh, Muslims. So Muslims are mainly 95 percent in other people, just like there are Buddhism, Christianism, Hinduism, Sikhism. Other people they show five percent, but mainly people they are Muslims. And Muslim, we should have faith in God, one God, and prophet is the uh, uh, Muhammad, the last prophet of the God. Sorry, that is mixed here because I was mixing some slides, so. I will inspire this. And these are the religious places, just like here, they have a great idea. But we have mosques, in mosques you can see, we have some mosques which have more than 300,000 people, they can go in one time. Some mosques where we can go more than 100,000 people. So we have a big mosques, and all the people they go there and they pray. And the special occasion of uh, festivals they go there. But I told that not only Muslims, there are other people just like Sikh people. They have their own temples. From all over the world, the Sikh come and they follow their own religious festivals here. And we have church, many churches in many parts of the Pakistan. So Christian people, they go and they have their own identity there. Okay, now uh, we will discuss about the dress. I have my beliefs and mask, so please come to this <laughs> They wanted to show the real colors of uh, the slides. Uh, okay, so my point, uh, I, will just, I will discuss something about the dress code. As you see that uh, all of us here, they are, they are wearing different uh, dresses. Uh, so what is the basic concept behind what we use uh, in our country? So basically, as Pakistan is a, a Muslim majority state, so uh, we follow the Muslim dress code. And the Muslim dress code is that uh, you uh, have to cover your whole uh, body according to the uh, religious uh, face. And uh, that's why people they wear uh, modest and graceful clothes, and uh, uh, you will see a very clear dif difference between the uh, uh, <coughs> clothes that uh, men use and the clothes that the women use. Like right? uh, I also have got long clothes, and they also have got long clothes. But in case of the women, we uh, use a lot of embroidery and many colors. 
this is a national uh, dress of Pakistan that uh, most of my colleagues, the Pakistani colleagues here, they are using. Uh, it's a uh, it's uh, uh, the long one. The long shirt is called kameez, and uh, below the this kausar is known as shawar. And below there is a kind of uh, shoe, the special design that is made in Pakistan. And uh, it is a very special kind of shoe. Uh, this design has been copied by a uh, designer uh, from UK that is called Paul Smith. So if anybody of you is interested to buy these shoes, so you can buy with the price of uh, 300 uh, UK pounds. <laughs> okay, so now the first slide was about the um, casual kind of dresses. Now this is the party dress uh, when you are going to some parties, some weddings or some special events. So you can use uh, such kind of embroideries and different colors also. Okay, this guy is a little bit more with modern look, a uh, college guy that is using, mixing some kind of uh, uh, east with west. Okay, now let's talk about the female. So female outside the house when you are supposed to go, so you have to be very modest. Like uh, in Pakistan, we are we are a Muslim state, but everybody has got his or her own opinion or the way uh, that you can uh, follow. So uh, in case of the women also, we have got a very open choice. We can use this uh, burqa. You can see the women is uh, also happy. It's not something that if you cannot see the face of a women inside burqa, so it's something that we are imposing on them. It's something that's a part of culture and they love to love to use it. And they are more comfortable in using that. If you will ask them to wear kausa jeans or something like this, so they will be like, it is something uh, very impossible for them. They are more comfortable in burqa. Uh, they are some college girls, they use uh, a scarf from their hair. There are some girls who uh, use long abayas, black in color. Uh, if you are even using kausa jeans and a small shirt, Still, there is a, a habit of using this kind of pashmina over there. And you can see here, uh, Angelina Julie, she visited two, twice, uh, two uh, times for uh, Pakistan, and both of the times she also followed the uh, Pakistani culture, so she was using one kind of shawl and she loved to do that. Okay, uh, this was, that was something about the uh, what female wear outside the houses. It doesn't mean that they are always like just single color uh, shawl or something, a burqa kind of stuff. Inside the house, on the parties, on the colleges, universities, we have a uh, very broad kind of uh, dresses that uh, women they are accustomed to use. And for example, here you can see that, okay, uh, in that case there is a frog, in this case there is a small kameez, in this case also there is a frog. And like we use colors and embroidery together to look more beautiful. So this is all uh, something about jewelry. I have never seen anyone in Brazil using such kind of jewelry, but there in Pakistan, if you will go, so especially in the uh, festivals of uh, uh, wedding anniversaries, especially uh, some kind of uh, if you will go in any uh, wedding, you can see such kind of girls over there. It's very common, and uh, we have best quality of gold that is being sold in Pakistan and it's very common every girl in, uh, in Pakistan she has she has a bit of you know uh, pure gold. <coughs> Doesn't mean that we are very rich. <laughs> okay. Actually they, uh, it's not something that okay I have to buy it's something that uh, comes from the grandmothers also from grandmothers uh, from something very family and tradition kind of thing. This is about the uh, Pakistani currency. You can see we have got different coins and all the uh, currency notes with the uh, uh, founder of Pakistan, Haji Azam. Now, uh, let's talk about the languages. Every Pakistani sitting here at least knows five languages. Because when we are born in Pakistan, we are sent, uh, okay, we open our eyes and we start learning the language that our parents talk. But then, when we uh, grow up like four years, we are supposed to go to schools where we learn from the beginning English, Urdu, um, and uh, Arab to read Arabic because our religious book is in Arabic. So, uh, the national language of Pakistan is Urdu, official language is English, and there are the major languages because Pakistan has got five provinces and one uh, capital city. So, the main languages that are being spoken in those majority you know, urban areas, they are Punjabi, Pashto, Hindu, Saraiki, uh, Sindhi, Balochi, and Chitwali. But apart
apart from these, we have got many minor languages. Like in Pakistan, uh, it's a kind of uh, city that is divided into many regions, and each region has got a different language and different culture, different food, and everything is completely different, and uh, it has got it, its own taste. Now let's talk about the women in education. Uh, okay, there. Um, what I say about the women is like when I came here, it was something like uh, shocking for many Brazilians that how you can come here. And if you came here, you are Pakistani. So I am Pakistani, and my master is from Pakistan, and I am here with a few other uh, Pakistani girls. Yes, we have uh, girls who are uh, working uh, even in very high places, in very good places. It depends from family to family. Yeah, there are because of uh, how can I say uh, poor family conditions. Yeah, there are some cases in which the girls they cannot study, but that exists all over the world, even here in Brazil also. So there are exceptions. But we have girls. They are. Um, about 52% of the Pakistani population and you can find them in every field of um, uh, working. So uh, our former governor of State Bank of Pakistan was also a woman, that is uh, Shamshad Akhtar. And in the whole Islamic country, this is the first woman who was the Prime Minister of Pakistan two times. Uh, she has the honorary degrees of, uh, like she has honorary degrees of uh, Doctor of Law from Harvard University and University of Toronto. And um, she, is, she was the first woman in all the uh, Muslim uh, states to be uh, Prime Minister of Pakistan. Now I will invite uh, <coughs> so this is, okay, so this is the uh, capital city of Pakistan, Islamabad. Our uh, National Assembly has 250 seats, including 150 uh, that are just reserved for the women. And the uh, Senate has 25 seats uh, from each province. This building is the Prime uh, Minister's Secretary, where they do their things. And uh, this is also the capital city of Pakistan. This is Pakistan Monument. 